All right, today's extra tutorial is a little bit about uh, how to use particles to make smoke. So we haven't done particles before, and there are three particle systems we can use in After Effects that'll work pretty good for us. So I'm gonna start off by going to find a picture, or actually I'll get the picture in a minute, but first I'm gonna set up my project. So new project, and that's trying, it's trying. Maybe I have to click new project here. So here's a new project. Now I'm gonna do a new composition. Typically, uh, we want to go with as high a res as we can, depending on what we're trying to accomplish, but we can always bump down the res later. So I'm going to start with 1920 by 1080. This is the HD 1080 2997. You always want to use square pixels. When you don't use square pixels, weird things happen. Things get out of, uh, out of ratio and stuff. So that's good, and 2997 on the frame rate is just fine. Click OK. So I'm going to go find a picture real quick. So I found a picture. It's a little bit small, and remember when you're searching for pictures to use in uh, practice for After Effects. If you're doing a job, you won't even create your own media, but when you're practicing, it's okay to do this. It's under uh, fair use guidelines of copyright. So I'm going to use this a little bit too small, and if I pull this and hold down Shift, it'll maintain proportion. It's still too small. Let me zoom out and make that a little bit bigger. So drag and hold down shift. There we go. So there's my image. And I just actually clicked on a button that made it open up in here. When you double click on an image, it sometimes opens up in its own sort of separate layer composition. So keep an eye on your tabs up here. Uh, those kinds of errors can occur. Now what I want to do is I want to put uh, sort of smoke. And there's two ways of doing, well, there's a lot of ways of doing smoke. You're only one of the truth. Um, but uh, first smoke I'm going to make is going to be a column of smoke rising up from one of these buildings. So I'll put it close to the front. And uh, what I have to do to make smoke is I'm going to make a new layer. So layer, new, and solid. You could also go down here and choose right click, new, solid. Uh, there's probably two or three other ways to do it. And the color you choose for this doesn't really matter. But I'm going to pick a color, any color, and put it on top. Now. When you're building effects, there's an Effects and Presets menu over here. If you don't see that, you can find it by going to the Window menu and choosing Effects and Presets. You can also make sure that you are in uh, the Default Workspace, so Window, Workspace, Default, or Effects, but the Effects and Presets panel is awesome because it allows you to search quick and easy. So I might not even be sure the name of the thing I'm looking for. I do happen to know what I'm looking for today, but sometimes I'm not sure. So if I go, uh, particle something, there's these three things, particle playground, particle world, particle systems. Now, these other two ones are kind of 3D-ish. Particle playground is low uh, demand. It works very flexibly. And what it does, I don't know if you can see this, let's zoom in on that. There's a little particle emission. It's kind of like one of those safe and sane fountains you might get for the 4th of July. Now, what I want to have happening is I want this to be smoking already. So, uh, gosh, I made this 30 seconds long. That's huge. Composition, let's take composition settings and knock this down to 10 seconds. 10 seconds, zero frames. There, that's much better. So, what I need to be able to do is I want to start it in the middle. So, I'm going to drag this over, which then shortens the effective time it works with. All I have to do is drag it forward, and now that piece will last longer. So, now I've got particles already spewing when I start my project. So, let's zoom back out again. And so totally does not look like smoke just yet. Let's work with it. There's a uh, effect controls panel up here. Every time you add effects or controls or whatever from effects and presets, the controls will be up here and they're sort of closed off. Let's start off by choosing a color uh, and let's go with like a white. I need a contrast, so I'm going to look at where it's at and I'm going to think, okay, let's make sure it contrasts well against the background. And really, to do a good job on smoke, you want to do a couple of layers of this what different colors working. So let's just get a nice stream of smoky going on there. Still doesn't look like smoke. You're right. Let's bring up the size of the radius to like 8. Uh, for this scene, I'm going to go 6. Try messing around with that to get different uh, results. And we still not, may not be done yet. We also need to change the gravity because as you can see, the particles go up and then they fall down. So we don't want them falling down because smoke goes up. So let's choose gravity. And let's reduce the gravity to like zero. Now it probably is going to go up kind of fast, so we do want to mess with the velocity. And we want to change the starting point to 
like one of these places that starts from like a building or the middle of Central Park or someplace. Maybe there's some guy out there roasting hot dogs with his family. Let's put a smoke there. So now it does this. And it still just looks like a bunch of pixels. Doesn't even look close to right. So let's go find another effect called Fast Blur. Now I think they're trying to uh, get rid of this one. So they're calling it Legacy for now. And I'm going to have to work to figure out what else we can use instead of Fast Blur. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. That's because Fast Blur default settings is like nothing. So crank this up a little bit. And now it's starting to look like smoke. There we go. So messing around with those settings. Um, there are some things you can change to go with horizontal. That looks terrible. Vertical probably also looks pretty bad. Okay, so there's that. So there's uh, that repeat edge pixels. I'm not sure what that does. Turn it on, turn it off, try stuff out. So now, if I hit tab or space, excuse me, there I can see some smoke popping up. Right there. So let's let's just come closer to that so we can see what that looks like. Um, gosh, let's go here and bring ourselves closer to the scene. Oops, I just zoomed in a whole bunch. Spacebar, there we go. Spacebar, like all of our other programs, allows us to do this. Okay, so now it's generating some work, so it's going slow as that green builds up. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Now, you could always um, add more complexity or interest to this by choosing to duplicate that. So, duplicate this copy. Let's take the lower copy and change, or the top copy or whatever, and change the color of the particles to something else. And not a bad idea to alter the velocity just a little bit so that it's not just the copy of the, the, the one on top of it. You could even, too, choose T for transparency. It's actually T for opacity. Very weird. Bad spelling. But uh, now you have this that allows you to hit the space bar. And then we have two colors of smoke popping up. And you could layer that up like crazy with uh, different poofs and puffs of different shades of gray to get more complexity to it. So uh, that works pretty good. Let's add still one more layer of interest onto this. Let me zoom out. And what I want to have now is I want to have sort of a, let me lock these layers. Uh, I'm going to add another one. So new, uh, solid. Now this one is different. This could be the mist or the fog or the smoke blowing across the scene. Same effect. That we're going to get. So I have to find the particle again. And again, it's particle playground. You can drag and drop it right there. You can also drag and drop it onto your layer here. And you want to add that to a solid layer. Now, again, it's just a little 4th of July safe and sane fireworks right there until we make some changes. Now, this one's going to be very different because it's going to be giving us a whole, um, whole screen effect. So it's going to teach us something about the, how this works differently. Uh, different settings. So again, I'm going to slide this over because I want it to be going the whole time. So I bring that to the middle. I slide that over. Make sure everybody's all the way out. And kind of didn't get those all the way to the end. Let's drag those all the way out. All right, now I can lock those up again. All right, back to this, back to this layer here. In this case, we have again the safe and sane fireworks happening there. I'm going to hide these other two just to make it easier to work with this one. And here's a couple things that we didn't talk about the first try time around. Uh, we can change the barrel radius. And the barrel radius, let's drag on that. Barrel radius, something's not working. I'm on the wrong layer. Got to be on the right layer. So, cannon, barrel radius. We're going to get this nice and wide. And now I can't see it anymore. Let's bring up the size of the particles. Okay, now I can see how wide it is. So I want to get the barrel radius nice and wide because I want to just, it's no longer from a single source. It's sort of a fog drifting across the scene. And uh, the source is right here. So we're going to uh, we're gonna want to work with the velocity a little bit. Let's just bring that down. And so now the particles are coming down. That's awkward. I thought they'd go the other way. Maybe I changed the velocity. Oh, the, let's undo the velocity change I did there. That's going to be in gravity. Sorry. So let's bring the gravity down. And so the, gra the particles are going up now. Out of the... Now, 
going negative now. Let's, let's keep it just around zero. So I'm going to keep them sort of about there. So now they mostly go up, they're drifting. And we don't want to have a huge fast smoke to this. Later there's ways to add turbulence to it and wind effects. But right now we're just trying to build the, the, the learning level of this. Let's change the color of it. And you'll notice, in this case I want to bring across my screen. So what I can do is... So to get the feel I'm after, have this sliding across the screen instead of up the screen, all I have to do is go to the direction setting here under Canon, and let's set that to like 89 or 88 or who knows what. Um, so that sets that up. And we also, so that's drifting it across, but you'll find, as I did, that uh, the, it starts off over here, drifts to the right, and if I slide this over, it's got an ending point, it's got a boundary. So what I did to fix that is... Uh, Maybe not the best solution, but if I size this up using the selection tool, I may want to size those uh, particles down now. So let's bring this particle radius down. We can change the uh, particles per second up so it gets a denser crowd of particles going on. And we still need to add the, uh, the blur to make it work properly. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, find the fast blur and drag that on to my effect and again you can put it here or here you can also I think just double click it maybe I guess you gotta drag it on there okay you can also by the way to find that same effect you can effect and under blur and sharpen you have to have something selected to apply it to so effect blur and sharpen and then there's a fast blur I don't know, the fast blur I'm looking for is gone from here. Fast box blur, not sure what the difference is. Let's try blurring the radius. And that looks like it kind of did the thing. So now I have that fog sort of drifting across. And again, this can be fog, it can be uh, smoke, it can be a lot of different things. And so it's all about the settings you use. And um, two things, get in there and mess with the settings. And realize that somebody else has already done the thing you're trying to do before. So look for a tutorial online, whether it's smoke or dust or fog or steam from the shower, you know, all th kinds of things it could be. Now the one thing that I didn't get on this yet is I wanted to mess with my gravity. My gravity force is 16, so if I put this up or down, it's going to affect which way do my particles go. So I'm going to put this down like at 2, because I don't want to necessarily go up, but I don't want to go down either. Okay, and again, what I do with the first one, if I push Control D and duplicate this one, I'm going to take my top copy, I'm going to reduce my particle radius on this one, and I'm going to change the color, something a little bit darker. So now I've got a more complex bit of fog or smoke or whatever going on across the screen. And uh, later we'll look at ways to alter this a bit more, but that's essentially how you get couple kinds of smoke going on and as you may recall there's also the guy in the Central Park roasting burgers and hot dogs with his family so let's see if that's even visible through this there it is there's that little smoke happening so that's what you're gonna do today is, is put together a little scene using some smoke and some fog um, to create your scene with so and again you can also <laughs> infinite number of, number of things you could try but you can try the transparency and you can try a variety of different things to build the scene, get more realism. And uh, your goal is to try to find a way to use this in your Macbeth piece. All right. Uh, have fun with this. And then we're working on uh, also recording our pieces today. Peace out.